Western University. I'll be moderating this interesting session that will talk from awareness to action, providing time and space for faculty to create. Um, we have uh, Jamie Holmes and Amy Lager from Tulsa Community College. So go ahead and start. I will watch the chat. Okay, great. Okay, thank you. It looks like there's already one thing in there. So okay, I will go. Ahead and I don't want to miss the first screen share, so I'm not going to do anything. Okay, just very quickly so that I have a, an idea of who my audience is. Raise your hand if you are primarily an OER support person. Like you do most of what you do is supporting others doing OER. Okay, awesome. And then raise your hand if you're mostly subject matter expert or doing the OER, creating it for your own classes. Okay, all right, very good. So um, we're gonna go ahead and get started. And um, this is just all about what we did when we wanted to um, formalize our OER support for our, why isn't that working? It was working. Maybe we, <laughs> Seriously, I just there we go. There we go. Okay, so um, I'm Jamie. That's Amy. We're part of a um, six-person team at TCC that uh, is out of the library supporting our faculty with OER. So here's kind of just a very brief history. We were an OpenStax institutional partner in 2015, so we have been in OER-ish for uh, some time. Um, we had interest from faculty in adapting, so moving beyond OpenStax and adapting OER. Um, creating their own OER, et cetera. Um, and when the funding came up uh, through OCO at first and then through the state regents, um, we we addressed or we saw that addressing a barrier that we had identified previously. So, you know, these faculty are going to do this work. How are we going to support them and, and compensate that time? And when the, the funding came about, we sort of saw that as a solution to our problem. Um, but the problem was, even though faculty knew there was money there and they knew the value of OER and they wanted to do OER, they still weren't doing the projects. They, they just weren't. And, and really, it's human nature. When I've got so many things that I have to do, that there are deadlines on, that are, other people are waiting on me to get done, the stuff that I'd like to do gets pushed to the bottom of the list. And so that's what was happening. Um, I was having a conversation with Dr. Jennifer Campbell in our online learning department at TCC, and she was explaining that she had had the same problem with Blackboard Ultra. We had gotten Blackboard Ultra at TCC. It had some great features. She really wanted faculty to use it, but nobody wanted to spend the time figuring out how to use it effectively. So she was saying that she got had some grant money and she wanted to put, she put together a workshop series for faculty who were interested in being kind of champions of Blackboard Ultra. And I was like, oh my gosh, we have money from OCO, this was last year, uh, for implementing or moving press books forward at your institution. And so that was the, the funding that we used to um, compensate faculty for their time and effort, hopefully moving that up on their priority list um, in terms of, of getting things done. Okay, this is it. All right, so one of the problems that we had, uh, our, our faculty had identified was just this lack of time, like Jamie was saying. So we set it up so that there would be this protected time that we would meet synchronously in person on one of our campuses. Our team of librarians would be there to support the faculty as they're trying to find existing OER, evaluate it, curate it, and get it all set up into press books. So we uh, we decided that we wanted everyone to be on a level playing field when they arrived. Mm -hmm. So we made a prerequisite for applying to be part of our workshop series, uh, the OER 101 course through OCO. And then the sessions were set up and we'll go through each of the sessions, but we had four sessions. It progressed them along their process towards getting towards a final product. Um, we didn't have any uh, I thoughts that they might actually have a final product at the end, but we, we knew that we could get them on the road and get the ball rolling. And um, we marketed it to our faculty through um, the communication channels that our college has, through emails, through our liaison networks, through the librarians. And the uh, participant selection, so they, they 
completed the OER 101 course and got that course badge. And then we had them fill out a form with, and include that badge. And the participants were selected on a first come first serve basis. And then we also had a waiting list. In that, agree, in that form that they filled out, they agreed that they would attend all four of the sessions in order to get the stipend that we were able to offer through that funding. And it was really great because we had we had funding for 10, ses 10 participants. And then we had a waiting list that had, I think, four or five people on it. And uh, we were able to, Dr. Jennifer Campbell was able to find some additional funding and we were, we were able to extend that invitation to the additional participants as well. And I think we had uh, 11 total once we uh, got everybody situated. Okay, so um, just a little bit about the sessions. Um, our first session, of course, focused on um, finding and evaluating OER. They already knew what it was, why it was important. They knew the open versus copyright. They had all the basics down. So we really started with some goal setting. Like we had them look at what they wanted to do and, and sort of get that defined, what it was they were looking for. Um, and that set up part of their evaluation criteria uh, already because they knew what objectives objectives they want to meet, what topics they wanted to cover. Um, but we also, of course, talked about evaluation in a more uh, broad way um, in terms of uh, evaluating for quality, evaluating for uh, accessibility and that kind of thing. Um, we uh, introduced them to our favorite repositories and we talked about why those were our favorite, but we also pointed them in the direction of other places to look if that didn't work out. Um, and we talked a little bit about universal design in that first session and then accessibility um, in terms of um, uh, you know, uh, alt text and, and that sort of general sort of uh, accessibility uh, material. The next session was, I found great stuff, now what do I do? And so we focused there on the Creative Commons licenses and we asked them to identify what open license was on their material that they found so we could make sure that it was compatible with maybe other material they wanted to remix. Um, so we talked to them about remixing. We, we showed a video on adaptation and, and what that means and what goes into that. Um, we discussed attribution statements and we helped them, you know, when they were ready to create their own attribution statements. Um, we talked with them about the license that they would put on their work and what that might mean downstream for their material. And then um, we actually introduced them that at the end of that second session to Pressbooks because we knew that some of our, our folks were ready for that. Um, in that second session. And then in the middle, we actually did this in the spring and uh, the, the what would have been our third session ended up being Good Friday and we didn't want to have a problem with people being out of town and, and everything. So we made the, this session optional. It ended up that most people took advantage of it anyway. Um, it gave us a little flexibility because we had some illness. The COVID was still going around. I mean, it still is, but we had some participants that uh, could, couldn't make one of the earlier sessions because they were ill. And so they were able to come to this session and get caught up. We got to sit down and just really focus on their individual projects because we had all of the support in the room and really get people a little bit further on down the road. <laughs> and then um, Jamie was able to help everyone uh, understand what opportunities there were as with the ad adaptation and the um, adoption. adoption. Adopt, adapt, create. Yes. <laughs> Those grants. Yes. <laughs> I can't do it right unless I start with adopt. Have to. Adopt, adapt, create. <laughs> um, we, we're, we, really plugged those grant opportunities during this session. And I know that some of our participants actually filled out the paperwork for uh, applying for those grants during this session. Then on uh, session three, we made sure everyone had their account set up and helped them create a practice book we had some, uh, we, we 
Also, I, I don't think we mentioned this, but we had the in-person session sessions, but we also had a Blackboard set up um, that went along. We didn't say that. I guess we did it. This is all built in Blackboard. <laughs> yeah, we all had all of these materials in Blackboard. So we were able to put uh, Word documents and um, other things that, that they could import into their practice book so that they could they could really practice with the Pressbooks format before actually getting into their project. So we we had some things that we all did together and then we set them free to do on their own. We talked a lot about the tools that the, are built into uh, Pressbooks for creating, how to pick your style, what style was going to be best for your kind of book. And what the metadata needed to say so that uh, the book could be findable and, and, and have all of the proper licensing and um, attribution and that kind of the thing. And then our fourth session was um, kind of, it was kind of um, all over the place because some people weren't ready for bells and whistles yet, which we'll talk about when we get to our what we learned from this. Um, but we did have to make sure they knew all the cool things that Pressbooks could do. Um, and so here we covered uh, adding media and they practiced adding a photo. They uh, practiced adding a video, practiced adding audio to a, a practice book. Um, we looked at H5P. We talked about the value of it. We showed them some examples. We did not show them how to build it because those of you who know uh, the back end of Pressbooks, you know that you don't do that in a workshop because it's, it's just too individualized. Um, the same, uh, we talked about revision and version control and some things that you consider when you, uh, if you're going to, to maybe plan a future um, second edition, third edition, that kind of thing. Um, we talked about the, the various plugins that are available, the Hypothesis plugin, the Table Press plugin. Um, we, we briefly, briefly talked about LaTeX um, because honestly, Amy, like you're there and kind of explained what it was and we pointed them to a video. Neither of us are really math people. And, and for me, if somebody sends me a LaTeX problem, that's the, the, the formula generator that'll generate like algebraic formula type notation. Um, and I can't, I have trouble troubleshooting that because I don't understand what it's supposed to say in the first place. Um, so that's problematic, but we let them know they could do that. We showed them some things that it would do in terms of rendering formulas. And we said, if you need this, you know, we are available as a, a help desk style um, after the fact. Um, we talked about publishing and then we talked about kind of next steps for for where they would go after that Friday was over, like what help we would be able to provide, et cetera. Um, so that's kind of an overview of our four sessions and how we chunked the material um, together, which is something that I've always struggled with when I think about formally teaching OER. Um, I always struggled with how much to, to give in a session and whatnot. So um, I, I, feel, I feel pretty good about how we chunked it, except for a few things um, that we learned along the way. One of the biggest pieces of feedback we got from our participants was some of them did not want to sit in a room with other people to do their, when they really got into doing the writing and the adaptation and that they didn't want the noise and the distraction of the other participants. And also we had some people that got sick and needed that hybrid format such as we're doing today for the conference. So we threw that in the mix at the last minute, and um, some people just did it because that that was their preferred work style. We felt like we, the way we introduced press books, was too soon for some people and too late for other people, and everyone was on a different page. And so when we do this in the future. We want to really kind of rethink the way we're offering that support during the workshops for Pressbooks and kind of do it more help desk style. And we, we were very fortunate that we had such a big team of librarians. There were always at least four of us that were there for every single workshop. And sometimes there were six of us there for every workshop. And so we had almost one-on-one -on -one, uh, support for those 11 participants. 
So, right. and so, you know, with, with all of that, that we learned, um, one of the things that we have decided and, and, and I'm in the process, we are in the process of, um, I'm on, I'm lead on it and I'm, I'm having trouble. Um, but I'm, we're, <laughs> no, we're moving it from, from this format, this, you know, face-to-face, uh, -face, we're going to teach you and show you some things, and then you do a little bit of work, and then we teach you some more things, and you do a little bit of work, like, all in the same room. I'm moving it to be a more um, asynchronous, online, self-paced experience, which is more challenging than I expected it to be. I need instructional designer help, um, so I'm, I'm planning to, to meet with our ID um, soon so that she can kind of help me visualize how to move that that material but what my my dream is that i we would have a a fully in-person version we'd have a fully asynchronous uh version and then we, we maybe could have a you know one that's sort of morphed um or you know a hybrid of the two um because really what works best for that person won't work for that person next week or you know whatever and so we're trying to make it as flexible as possible um and then another thing that we You'll notice when you when you get into the materials and you see what we've shared with you, um, we have teaching notes, very detailed teaching notes for sessions one and two, not for three and four. Partially, authentically, because that was more of a work session. It was less of a, of a directed teaching sort of a situation. Um, but also because we we really did kind of put this together and and sort of build it as we went a little bit. And so we weren't as formal and prepared by the end as we were at the very beginning. And to that note, um, we also didn't think about the fact that some of them may want to demonstrate that they went through this professional development. I mean, obviously, if you come out of it with a project, you know what you're doing. Um, but I had a, a faculty member, I mean, we certainly got them paid quickly when they finished, but we did not send any sort of a like, hey, good job, or we didn't close that circle very well. And so I had somebody um, email me last week and say, hey, I'm submitting my portfolio for evaluation. And if you sent me a certificate for that workshop, I have no idea where it is. Can you resend it? And I'm like, oh, oh, wow. And I like pinged them really quickly. I'm like, hey, we're going to do, we're gonna do uh, certificates. And so that kind of thing, like we wish maybe we would have thought the whole thing through a little bit better beforehand, but you know, we learn. So um, that's just one thing that um, we kind of thought about after the fact. Um, okay, so we are just about at time for questions, I believe. Um, what questions do you have? What can we uh, clarify, expand upon? Usually, I talk so much. She wants to bring a hook and like pull me off the stage when it's time because I say I say a lot of words. So we weren't expecting to be like two minutes early. So yeah, I'm busy. You mentioned using hypothesis with the OER books, and I haven't seen that work yet. I also don't, I don't work in black when I work in Canvas, so I don't know if that's different at all, but I was just curious about that a little bit. Like what hypothesis is? How you, how you make hypothesis work with a press book? Does it just work the same? Well, here's, the, here's the benefit of that. You know, for hypothesis, it's free, right? right. And, and you can, you create a free account, and then you have to, in order to use it on random web pages, you have to install that extension or the bookmarklet, I think they call right, it in Firefox. Right. Well, what you can do when you have a Pressbooks book is you can activate Pressbooks in your book mm -hmm. so that other people don't have to have a hypothesis account okay. to, to, to annotate and make notes in your book. Yeah, you but you're basically building that feature in. Yeah, that's um, right. Now they do have to create a free account in order to save their annotations, but they don't have to do the installation of the bookmark or the uh, browser extension, which a lot of students appreciate, especially because they often do their work at, on campus, um, and so they may or may not, you know, have that browser login kind of on the library computer. <laughs> yeah, right, exactly. So, <laughs> great, thank um, so yeah, and it's um, what I've used hypothesis with a faculty member uh, collaborating on a philosophy book. Yeah, she would mark in her book where she wanted the Gutenberg material, the Gutenberg uh, yeah. to go. Um, and so that's how we, we built a book using that communication channel. Thank you. Sure, any others? Yeah. So this being an you know open access conference, would you be willing to share your lesson plan? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. That's that's the that's the bonus. Um that Q that QR code um will get you to a Google Doc that is not editable. 
because we want that to stay intact. But you just access that through your Google um, and you should be able to make a copy of it. And then you can do whatever you want. It is licensed CC by NCSA. We do not want anybody making a profit from this downstream because we worked hard on this. Um, because we built that plane while we were we, flying we it. Did. <laughs> you made that oh, oh, um, can you move yes, that as soon as I figure out how oh, maybe you just click on a black part that's not yeah dragged from there. So, yeah. Okay. Ooh, good job, Amy. Okay. Now, um, uh -oh. now we gotta get. Oh, we gotta go out. left. And now we gotta get. Uh, oh, yeah. Say not now. Uh, not now. Go away. And then now, does that do it? I worry it's gonna to the left. To the left. It'll automatically. There we go. I got it. Does it work now? Does it work? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So. so whatever's under that square clearly is not important for the message. <laughs> I guess. Remote folks, can you, I'm sure they can access that, no problem, right? Because they're not seeing our bar. I, I can, no, after they get done the scanning, I can, mm -hmm. I can copy and paste the link and put it in the chat. Yeah. Now, here's the other thing. Um, yeah, that is the game. We can, Amy can, um, can make that QR code like a hyperlink uh, on the slide deck. So when you get to the slide deck, you'll be able to get to that too. Otherwise, you also can always email me and email I'll send you everything. Um, do you want to know what one of the hardest parts of this was? Because we built this in Blackboard and obviously y'all can't get to our Blackboard and you can't modify. So yeah. pulling that material out and putting it in the Google Docs form that, but it helped me because I now, as I was doing that, I was like, oh, this piece could be um, online asynchronous do, this way, you know, it, it like forced me to kind of look at the course again. Okay, Amy just pulled it up. So this is what um, I'm trying to put it in the chat for the online people. Oh, yeah, that's a great idea. Here we go. Awesome. Okay. So um, you can see on the left, the table of content structure, um, what I've provided for you. is um, just a little bit about the overall structure um, so that you can sort of see how we built it. You know, we paid them 250 um, for attending and participating fully in four out of five possible work sessions. Um, we did have them do a little prep before they showed up. Um, and so that module, you can see up there, pre-workshop module, um, it has it had three items. I tried to be very clear about how we organized it in Blackboard. It's hard to do outside of Blackboard, but I, I tried to. And so you can see there it says three items in our Blackboard module. And then I separated those out as setting, uh, heading twos so that you could sort of see how it was built. Um, and then we did utilize the discussion board uh, pretty extensively at the beginning, not so much at the end, just because everybody kind of got off on their own um, individual um, projects and it was more them needing help. Um, we did build a hey I'm stuck help me discussion board. Not one person used it. Probably because they asked us questions in the session. And then after the fact I think I don't know we maybe got two or three random emails mm -hmm. about people needing to um, just get a little bit of help finishing or whatever. And I'll be clear um, out of the 11 people, I think only four actually finished their projects in time to teach th with them summer, which was our goal because we were trying to layer this funding. You know, you get 50 bucks for doing the online OER, then you got 250 for coming to the workshops. And then when you're all done with your project, you get the 500 for adopting or the, at the time it was a thousand for adapting um, or the 2000, I think, for uh, an original authorship. And we actually had one person in our workshop do an original authorship, Chris Perkins. Mm -hmm. um, the, yep. And he was one that we were trying to catch because he was one that signed up way back at the very beginning of the OCO money. Those of you guys know what I'm talking about. And and Amy was his advisor. And it was he wouldn't run from you exactly, but it was one he of those like, to avoid yes, me. Yes, because he knew she was going to say, how's your book coming along? <laughs> and so, and that's, we had some really like, great ideas and we had people who were super passionate about OER and we knew they wanted to do it but he just couldn't make time for it and so we said hey 
we'll give you this money if you make time for it. Come hang out with us on Friday afternoons four times and we'll get you where you need to be. And he did he it. Finished he finished it. Finished it. He's he teaching with it this fall. It. Um, and it's a great book. It's comp two with a humor focus. It's, it's, really, it's really great. Book, yeah. So. Anyways, other questions? Did somebody? Okay. Please feel free to reach out to us um, if you have any more questions or you need any other information about it, if I missed something or something doesn't connect. And I put our um, our email up here. This is OER librarian at tulsacc.edu. If you email that, it will go to yeah. our whole team so that somebody can get the information to you as quickly as possible. And we really try to funnel OER questions through that so that we don't unless you're working one, we're working one on one with somebody. Yeah. So yeah, go ahead and let us know if you have any questions. Okay. Awesome. We're all good. Thank you guys.